we need to find a way around it. The easiest it. land border in the world. We probably lead the nation as far as smuggling attempts for aliens and narcotics. You have anywhere from you know 90,000 to 100,000 people coming through this port of entry every day. That's like a small city coming through this port of entry on a daily basis. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. What's up, man? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, you already know. Suanza la suburban. Let's get this video on the road. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Cartel Life. For all you guys that are new, the link is down below so you can follow my whole story from the beginning to the end. From Mexican prison to state to federal to, I mean, you fucking name it. Follow me on all my other social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and now brand new Patreon account. Only $3 a month and you get to see very exclusive videos. Cartel life, prison life, everything life. What's up, man? <laughs> Drug smuggling along the border has been always a cat and mouse game with the Mexicans and the American authorities. We need the people out to find them who are hiding within that mass of people who come in every day. I mean, back in the day, way back in the day when I was younger, it was it was going both ways. A lot of Mexican nationals that would come to the United States to work for the year would bring back in summer all of American TVs, American. They would sell all this American stuff in Fayucas. It's like a I guess you could say like an outside store where all the American stuff and Moro Leon had a really big Fayuca. I forgot what day it was, but you know, it's always happened pretty much bringing stuff across the border, whether it's from America this way or Mexico that way. It's always been there. I think I live in Seoul all morning. Must have been a fiesta last night. They all overslept. Yeah. Up oh, as a first customer of the day. And it's it's always been a profit money maker job, whatever you want to call it, smugglers, traficantes, uh, cartels, whatever you want to call it, but it's always been there because it's it, this goes back to the 40s, 50s, 30s. I mean, you name it, Al Capone, the bringing up liquor from you know Mexico into the United States. I mean, now it's it's humans, it's guns, it's money, it's drugs. It's, it's a different ball game, but it's been there for a very long time. So of course, they're gonna develop with time. Now you have tunnels with electricity, railroad tracks, I mean, air conditioners. They use cannons, they use these cannons where they, almost like a bazooka and it throws the whole bundle of weed or whatever it is that they're crossing over over the wall and then somebody picks it up on the other side they've even tried to drive over the wall who does this shit? some of these smuggling organizations have been in business 20 30 40 50 years the amount of money is just too huge and too vast they're not just going to walk away from that profit because now there's a wall between the United States and Mexico. They're going to look for some other means. The smugglers are always waiting for the right time. Was to drive the smugglers into the ports of entry. We're at the San Ysidro port of entry. We're the busiest land border in the world. We probably people walking with 
the drugs on their back. Usually a bundle on their back is about 40 kilos. It takes them two weeks to reach a city in Phoenix. They have to walk through the desert. I seen these guys coming in by the hundreds at the FCI in Florence. Buses every day, hundreds, 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 you know, and a lot of them were carrying drugs, a lot of them were getting charged federally. We don't know if it's the cartel making them, you know, carry it. I doubt it. A lot of these kids, you know, they make two, three thousand dollars just for walking it over while they're walking themselves over. So they look at it as a business opportunity that they could get to the United States with their money in their pocket. The first tunnel was found in 1990. Do you know, do you know that they've been using these tunnels since, yeah. Think about it, saves time, money. So when I when I would cross the border, I actually got specific times, days to cross over, and usually it was on Thursdays at 12 or 1. I only crossed over once in Caborca, but all the other times when I was in Laredo and in Caborca, what we used to do a lot was just actually drop off the cars there with you know loaded loaded cars and vans. Good old weed. Everybody wanted to smoke weed back in the day i mean it was it was just you know it, that's what people were looking for and the border the cops were trying to find the weed and that's all that was you know a lot of weed was crossing over but then all the disco and colombians and all that shit happened coke came out everybody started doing coke remember america is the number one consumer of all drugs in the world in the world so that means before it's even there in the United States, it's already spoken for, it's already sold, it's already done. And that's what I used to tell my guy when he used to be like, hey, can you handle, you know, a thousand? And I would be like, yeah, I mean, once it's in my hand, it's gonna go. You know, it speaks for itself. So, smuggling over the border, under the border, on the side of the border, because they go through the C2 in San Diego and, you know, Texas and all that, it's never gonna stop. It's never gonna stop because the demand is so high. A lot of these kids that are dying in Mexico are very, very young, poor, uneducated. You know, and, and it's crazy because I see all these videos and I, and I talk to some people from back home and they're, they're going through an extended, you know, military training program that's taking them a couple of months, you know, three to six months and they're learning all this stuff. And these are, these are 16, 17 year old kids they have no education, but they're picking up military tactics. You know, you have to know what you're doing in order, in order to cut a head off. You don't just, I mean, yeah, you could just fucking chop it off with a fucking samurai knife or some crazy shit like that. But in order for you to take a limb anywhere off the body, you have to know where to cut certain ligaments to release that part. Now, I don't know why I know that, but I know that. <laughs> the smuggling is always gonna be there. Like I said, they'll go under, over it, by the side, shoot it over, drive it over. It just doesn't fucking matter. When there's a demand, the supply is gonna come. And this is why some of the biggest wars happen in Caborca, Tijuana, Laredo. I mean, you name it. This is why all the biggest wars happen in those areas, because if you control the tunnel, if you control that road, that's money. Money, it's it's a money printer. It's just printing money all day because all day other cartel members from other plazas, from other parts of Mexico are paying you to be able to use your tunnel and smuggle it over. Now, is there a best time and a best day to cross over? I don't think so, not no more. Back in the early 90s, yeah. Now with all this technology and all these cameras and all this crazy shit, now it's a little bit of luck, a little bit of mordida, you know, buying, buying somebody off a cop or something. But most of it is, is luck when you're crossing over on the border. There's thousands and thousands of cars, so it's like a lottery, you know what I mean? Not necessarily saying that there's a higher percentage of you getting caught, but there is, okay? So there is no best time, there is no nothing. All I can say is stay the fuck out of gangs, stay the fuck out of cartels, stay the fuck off of drugs, don't sell drugs, don't do drugs, don't transport drugs, and just stay the fuck out.
I did some pretty bad stuff, man, and did what I had to do to survive. And I, I wouldn't want nobody else to go through what I went through, seen what I seen, and had to do the things that I had to do. So just stay out, guys. My name is JC. I am Ron the Strong. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live Sabbath. If you live hard, life could be easy. But if you live easy, life could be hard, guys. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.